So today we're going to talk about uh, what are heterodox icons and how to avoid them. Hello everyone and God bless. Uh, this is Father Mikhail returning from a uh, very long hiatus. Um, as many of you know, due to my community post and my announcements, uh, my little girl was born on December 24th of 2022. And it's just been uh, consistent trials, of course, uh, with having a newborn, with having two children under the age of two. And uh, of course, with my matushka or my presbytera injuring her knee, and uh, I myself am currently dealing with a hernia. So please uh, keep me and your and my family in your prayers. Now on to the good stuff. So today's topic uh, or, or reflection was actually one that my wife suggested uh, that I do, and that is a talk on uh, heterodox icons on the internet and how to spot them, how to avoid them. Now, of course, there are some people out there who will see the thumbnail and get uh, either offended because they're Roman Catholic or uh, they'll be upset because I'm showing a heterodox icon as an Orthodox priest. And they, you know, there are some people out there who get really worked up over just showing these things. So, you know, that aside, I'm looking just to share the Orthodox position. You know, I want to be uh, charitable, but I have to be honest. So one problem I've noticed, especially on websites like Etsy, where you can, you can actually find a surprising amount of Orthodox items on Etsy. Um, even us priests can find vestments on there. Uh, my cassock uh, came from a shop on there. Um, and there's a lot of great iconographers on Etsy. But what is heartbreaking is there are many iconographers. There are some from Russia and, and some from Greece who have uh, decided to uh, write or paint icons of heterodox saints. Now, of course, from a business standpoint, I understand that they're trying to appeal to a wider audience. And if you're Roman Catholic, this, this is not, uh, for me, this is not a video of me trying to attack Roman Catholicism, but more so uh, to clarify what is the Orthodox teaching and where do we Orthodox Christians stand in response to this. Now, if you are an iconographer and you're seeing this video and you've painted icons of the Sacred Heart, uh, the Immaculate Heart, um, Pope John Paul II, Francis of Assisi, any post-schism uh, Western uh, saint in the Catholic Church is not a saint in the Orthodox Church. And not only is this misleading to you, uh, but it is also misleading to those who you might be trying to sell to. Now that said, one of the best ways to notice this, of course, is to become familiar with the liturgical calendar, to become familiar with Orthodox saints, saints like Saint Seraphim of Suraf, or Saint Nectarios of Aina, uh, Saint Anthony the Great is a great priestism saint, um, Saint Paisios, uh, Saint Joseph the Hesychast. These are all saints that we recognize on the Orthodox calendar. But, uh, and of course, today uh, was the Sunday of Saint Gregory of Palamas. And so it's in a lot of ways very befitting that we talk about this issue. No matter what, we should not be uh, praying in front of or to um, icons uh, of heterodox saints, of those who we do not recognize outside our church. And of course, this goes into our whole soteriological view of everything and uh, our ecclesiology. And to clarify our position, of course, uh, we Orthodox believe we are the ones with the truth. We have the sacraments, we have baptism, we have chrismation, we have Holy Communion. This is why, you know, if you're coming into the church from a heterodox uh, confession, you ideally should always be baptized. And we can, as priests, always baptize any convert that comes in through the door. There is nothing to say that we cannot. Uh, and in fact, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, of, uh, of form and everything else, most heterodox confessions do not practice triple immersion. Uh, so we should be baptizing everybody, absolutely everyone. And even if they do, we should still be baptizing them. Why? Because we believe we have the grace of the Holy Spirit. We have priests. 
and not to be inflammatory or if offensive to the Catholics, but we, you know, being very honest, don't believe that they possess the grace of the Holy Spirit. They don't have what we have. And so looking at that, if, if one doesn't have baptism, chrismation, or Holy Communion, that isn't to say that God is unmerciful to those who are heterodox, who maybe never been exposed to orthodoxy or don't know any better. We cannot speak for, for what God will judge. We can only say that God's mercy is infinitely greater than our own sense of mercy and justice, that God's justice is greater than ours, and that as much as we may feel pity or love towards uh, those who have uh, died outside of the church who, uh, or maybe even looking at the, the biographies of some Catholic saints, we might, some of us might feel, you know, a little bit sympathetic towards them. But that doesn't mean that we go and create icons or that we venerate them or that we pray to them. By doing that, you are straining the boundaries of the church. By doing that, you are saying that you think that the body of Christ is divided that the heterodox are in possession of Holy Communion, which we know from the canons of various councils, such as the Council of Carthage, the, the, you know, the various canons of the seven ecumenical councils, and even why we have councils, that this cannot be so, that those who have anathematized themselves, who have cut themselves off from the church, do not receive the benefit of being in the church. There's only one body of Christ. You know, there's only one bride of Christ. Christ is not a polygamist, and he is not a head uh, forgive me, sitting atop many bodies. So we have to take this into consideration. You know, of course, this doesn't mean that you should be going on to, uh, you know, an Etsy store and telling uh, the shop owner to take down their icons. You know, as a priest and getting this message out there publicly, I'm saying you guys should really stop doing these commissions. You guys should really stop doing this. There's plenty of sources for Catholic art that Roman Catholics can turn to. I'm sure the Uniates have their iconographers, but we must keep our plates clean as Orthodox Christians. We should be keeping our eyes focused on what is the church, what is in the church, and on our own saints. We have many, many saints, you know, and there are, of course, saints that we do share in common with the Catholics, and those would be the pre-schism saints, saints like St. Saint John Chrysostom, St. Basil the Great, and you won't see a whole lot of veneration of these saints in Roman Catholicism. Now, what's really strange to me is that it's very hard to find any icons a lot of the time. And, and I'm saying this because my, my daughter's patron saint is uh, St. Mary Magdalene. It is really hard to find an icon of her um, from Orthodox sellers. Sadly, a lot of Roman Catholics have a better devotion, it would seem, or at least more of a, a, a focus on St. Mary Magdalene than what we Orthodox do. And that's something that we definitely need to pick up the pace on. Now, that said, my wife and I did find uh, an Orthodox iconographer who uh, makes icons of, uh, of St. Mary, uh, Mary Magdalene. So that, that matter will be resolved in time. Um, it's really important for us to, of course, to be charitable to our family, to our friends who may not be Orthodox, who may be Roman Catholic, and to not go in attacking them and calling them heretics. You know, the real heretics are the ones who push the heresy. And then there are people who just simply don't know yet, or who haven't learned what Orthodoxy is yet, or haven't even had the opportunity to experience it. And you may be the only experience they have. And this is also why we should make sure that our walls are adorned with icons of canonical saints, that more so than anything, that we adorn ourselves with virtue and that we behave in a way that is befitting of Orthodox Christians. Now that said, there's nothing wrong with calling out error. There's nothing wrong with pointing out, hey, that's not an Orthodox icon. Hey, that's not an Orthodox saint. Or, hey, we don't say these prayers for heterodox. I know there was this whole thing over uh, Pope Benedict when he died. And, uh, you know, there are some patriarchs who are saying that we can say uh, memory eternal, yet the church, the canons, the saints, they all say no. You know, they all say that this only pertains to those within the church. And why is that? Well, it is within the church, within the eternal bride of Christ, within the eternal body of Christ in which we receive eternal life, that we gain eternal memory. And to proclaim eternal memory even though we think we're just being nice, we're, we're, we're unfortunately diminishing the importance of those words. You know, we're throwing them around like people throw around Merry Christmas 
or interchangeably Happy Holiday or Happy Easter as opposed to Kalo Pascha. You know, it, it's or or to to have a good Pascha. It's it's the diminishing of what is holy. It is the diminishing of impact, of importance, of meaning, and that's something we really. Um, struggle with in society. There's a, a, a wonderful word that I recently heard used to describe this, and it's called semantic creep. And it's when we gradually lose the meaning of certain words, of certain things that should have meaning, that should have impact. And when this happens, because either we speak too, too readily, too much, or, you know, we, we throw around things like memory eternal, we make icons of saints who are not within our canonical uh, jurisdiction, that are not within our church, and we have a problem because we're forgetting what these things mean. An icon isn't just a pretty picture. It's it's scripture, it's, uh, it's the depiction of a heavenly reality, it is the depiction of a person who has conformed themselves in the image and likeness of God, who has become truly Christ-like and worthy of honor and remembrance, um, a worthy intercessor who can assist us in our battle towards holiness. But when we make icons of those outside the church, or when we buy these icons, icons of people like Francis of Assisi, um, you know, Pope John Paul II, Therese of Lisieux, um, Catherine of Siena, Thomas Aquinas, all these people, we are diminishing the significance of our own communion. We're diminishing the understanding of it. We are blurring the boundaries and the borders. And the kingdom of heaven being a kingdom does have borders. And there will, people, there will be people out there who disagree with me. There will be people out there who will say that I'm, I'm being unfair or arrogant by saying this. These aren't my words, okay? If you have a problem with what I'm saying, with what I'm teaching. This is what the church teaches. This is what the saints say. This is what the Holy Fathers say. You look at St. Paisios, he was very against ecumenism. You look at St. Arsenios the Cappadocian, you'll see the same thing there. This is nothing new. And look at St. Gregory Palamas. He has very choice words to describe those who hold the filioque and who refuse to recant of it. You know, very, very choice words for these people. But Ultimately, we have to remember that our witness as Orthodox Christians is to the truth. It's to upholding what is true. Who is the truth? Jesus Christ. You know, where is his bride? The church. Where is his body? The church. The Orthodox church. The church that has changed the least. The church that has remained faithful to tradition. The church that is, yes, assailed by its own problems. And if you are Roman Catholic or formerly Catholic or Protestant and looking to come to Orthodoxy and expecting a perfect utopian paradise, the thumbnail on this video should be enough to warn you that it's not. There are Orthodox iconographers out there making heterodox icons. There are Orthodox Christians and hierarchs and priests who are pushing an agenda that would see the boundaries of the church destroyed, that would leave the lambs to go roaming free out from their enclosure and, and free pickings for the wolves and for the thieves. You know, you, we have to be mindful of who we allow to influence us. You know, you have to test everything. You have to be discerning about everything. Be discerning even about what I say. You know, I, I can get things wrong. I can make mistakes. You know, there are other priests who do that. There are greater priests who do that. There are priests out there who intentionally seem to want to, to play around with nuance. Icons, the saints, the dogmas of the church, these are not things that you can play around with nuance on. These are things that are fixed truths, hence why they're dogma. And a lot of this comes from the revelation of the Holy Spirit, who is spoken through the fathers of the church. And we see examples of this in the book of Acts with the Council of Jerusalem. And this continues on to this day in all the ecumenical councils of the church, where we see the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking through the fathers in the and in the consensus of the saints. Yes, you'll see saints and fathers who disagree with each other on an individual level, but where they agree, where there's consensus, that is the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is the truth. That is the magisterium of the Orthodox Church. It's in the apostolic deposit of faith. It is in the writings of the saints in the proclamations of the Holy Fathers and the canons and where all the saints, all the fathers agree. You know, Father Peter Hears has many talks about this over at Orthodox Ethos. 
Um, you know, the, there's been other uh, really good Orthodox YouTubers like Jay Dyer and Kyle who have spoken about this kind of stuff. Um, you know, the truth is where you will find the consensus of the saints. And we do not depict the heterodox in iconographic form. They did not receive our communion. They did not receive the body and blood of Christ. That's not to say that God has not granted them salvation. We can't speak for what God does. Whomever God judges and how he judges, that's his business. However, he has given us a surefire understanding and teaching in the Gospels, you know, and in the epistles and in the tradition handed down to us. And we stick with that because we know that is the surest path. We don't want to play around with the mercy of God. We really don't want to do that. And there are people out there who do that all the time. Let us not be one of them, brothers and sisters. Let's keep things simple. Let's keep things orthodox. And if you don't know, if there's something you're ever not sure of, ask your priest, ask your spiritual father. And if you can't, ask, ask your bishop. And if you really can't even do that, you know, get connected with a good orthodox community. Um, my Discord server, the, there's lots of Orthodox Discord servers out there. And, you know, I'm now that I'm getting back into things, I'll be a little bit more active on there. I'm going to be going back to my weekly uh, Q&A for my Patreon members. And I'll also be doing um, some weekly uh, Ask a Priest answers on my um, uh, every Thursday is when I'm going to commit to writing out some answers to some questions on the Ask a Priest forum on my Discord server. You can also find me at the Orthodox Meme Squad Discord server. And uh, and so you can reach out. And if you're not sure, again, your best bet is to go to your church, talk to a priest. And if, if something just doesn't feel right for you there, just keep searching. And more than anything, keep praying. Have a blessed Lent. Um, we're getting back in the full swing here uh, as best as possible with... Uh, with Living Orthodox. I am going to be starting uh, college next month to try and get a secular job. Um, as uh, if any of you have kept up to date with, with what's going on with me, I do have a Patreon. I do have some Patreon exclusive content coming out later this week. And so if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. Um, there will also be a more direct line of communication to me through that as well. Uh, I have to be, of course, sparing with my communication and sparing with my time, being a father of two young children and having to now work to provide for my family as best as I can. So uh, keep me in your prayers. I do start in April. Um, the GoFundMe, you know, it, it completed. I'm debating expanding it uh, just for the fact that uh, things did not pan out with the original uh, opportunity of employment that I was looking into. And so the most surefire way for me is to just finish my uh, my, my degree or my, my diploma and to, to move on to, uh, to a better uh, job opportunity that way. Um, and of course, you know, I am uh, going to be getting back to serving liturgy once my, uh, once my hernia has been dealt with. So keep me in your prayers. Um, for Orthodox resources or reviews of books, check out Orthodox Review. Um, that's a good channel. Of course, check out Orthodox Talks and uh, Patristic Nectar to kind of just, you know, dive into more of that online Orthodox um, uh, kind of phronema. And, uh, and of course, if you want to get more into the philosophy and the apologetics end, there's Orthodox Shahada, there's Jay Dyer, there's David Erhan. Um, Orthodox Meme Squad now has a really good podcast where they're, um, the, the Orthodox Squad podcast, where they're, uh, they've interviewed me and they're interviewing other priests and, and other uh, people in the church. There's all sorts of good Orthodox resources out there. And hopefully uh, I can continue to, to build this platform. So God bless you. Thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.